we're going to have a careful look at LEGO Star Wars vs Megablox Halo. Both of these themes have armies of fans, but two very different brick companies produce these models. One big question is, has Megablox done the Halo theme any justice? I'll be focusing on design and attention to detail, and let's smash these models up just for fun. Okay, so the Megablox Halo UNSC Short Sword has 471 pieces, and where I live retails for around $69.99, let's call that $70. Or if you're in the USA, $39.99, let's call that $40. The Star Wars Jedi T6 Shuttle has 389 pieces, and where I live retails for around $99.99. Let's call that $100. If you're in the USA, it retails for $59.99. And that's basically $60. So from what I can see, the LEGO Star Wars set is $30 more expensive and has 82 fewer pieces than the Mega Bloks Halo set. First off, I'm going to build the UNSC short sword and checking for box bloat, I find almost 10 inches. Or that's 250 millimeters. In the box are a few bags of bricks, which look all very similar an instruction book, and a decal sheet loaded with tiny decals. Well, before I kick off and start building this model, there's one thing about Halo is when you put your bricks out, you've actually got to sort them out. And because this is basically a gray and gray model in a sense, a whole bunch of gray, um, I've sorted them out by shape. And this is really important to do because it's gonna save a lot of the headaches that can happen when you're building, searching for bricks. There seems to be a whole bunch of what I call brain teasers, uh, strange shaped bricks that you don't really normally see. As I found of another Mega Bloks build that I did, I quite often used to lose the plot because I would jump ahead, my eyes would jump down the page and look at parts which are well ahead of where I was meant to be working, which may be that page. So I think what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to cover up the other page all the time, I'll fold back the book. So it stops me from wandering down and looking at things that I shouldn't be looking at. The other interesting part is there's a whole bunch of yellow bricks supplied which seem to be used to assist you in assembling the model and they're used to prop underneath parts when you're assembling them. Um, quite interesting, I haven't seen that before. We'll see how it goes. The big question is, will it be a nice easy build with a couple of coffees or will it be a headache with me reaching for the Aspro Clear? So away I go with my fat little fingers working so fast and it took me two and a half hours to build this lovely model. Well I just finished building this model, the time lapse camera is set up there for the speed build. First impressions, it's a beautiful model, it's very very impressive to look at. Uh, when I made this this first wing I did a few stuff up so I'm not sure if you'll see it in the speed build. I put one of the core bricks I put in was wrong and that ended up being a huge stuff up actually. There's a lot of decals or stickers on this model. What's a bit weird is here on the end of the wing it shows this decal to be on the rear brick. Sure enough, in the instructions, it's also shown in that position. But if I flip this book over and look at some more artwork, all of a sudden that stick has jumped to the front block there, so I don't know which is correct. The Halo fans are going to have to tell me. As I showed you before, you were given a whole bunch of yellow bricks to assist in building the wings. Yes, that's a very good idea, and yes, I certainly used my yellow bricks. And here are the spare bricks that I've got after the build. I'm always a bit paranoid. Did I leave these out of the build? Well, after building this model, yes, I incurred a Mega Bloks headache. I'm not sure whether it's the two and a half hours of concentration or the way the build book stacks up so many things in front of you while you're building. Possibly it's something that other people can answer who build both Mega Bloks and Lego. Okay, on to building the Star Wars T6 shuttle. And on inspecting the box, there's almost six inches. Well, that's 150 millimeters of box bloat. Spilling out all the contents reveals to me it's a numbered bag build. There's instructions here and decals as well. I always say that one of the strongest points of LEGO is the way they instruct the build. And this build is via a numbered bag system which literally spoon feeds you this model. Uh, unlike Mega Bloks and that Halo that I just built, you're not bamboozled by heaps of tasks on one page. It's a very gradual build up. And hopefully it's going to save me from getting a massive headache. Working at lightning speed to build this Jedi T6 shuttle took me just over one hour. Well, I've just finished this Star Wars shuttle. And I've got to say, it was a really enjoyable build. Although I did make a few stuff ups in building this front section. I don't know if you'll notice that in the speed build. I also forgot to dress one of the minifigures. I'm pretty sure your eager eyes 
are going to pick this out. You know, Lego do the build books so well. And one of the great examples of how they're different is they're asking for these pieces here and quite often there'll be a number of pieces similar to that. So what they do is they lay in a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship of the piece. So you lay your piece in there to work out the one they're asking for. And now this model is finished, I've only got a few little pieces left over as a bonus extra. In true Lego style, this is a one coffee build and absolutely nothing to get grumpy about. When you put these models side by side, you start to see they're pretty similar in size. As I'm not a fanboy of either Halo or Star Wars, I'm still very impressed with both of these models. In an overall appraisal of the craft these are representing, I feel both companies have fulfilled their goal here. If I put my little boy hat on and received either of these as a gift, neither of them would disappoint me. Let's take a closer look at the UNSC short sword. This craft has some excellent lines. It's a real eye-catching design. I do feel Mega Bloks have delivered something special here. It's far, far better than the Block Squad set that I reviewed last year. The use of camouflage bricks and highly detailed decals really add to the visual appeal. It does lack the play feature refinements that you would find in a Lego model. The underside is unfinished looking but seems to work. There's loads of layered bricks used giving the model a really solid feel. Yes, I'm very impressed with this lovely model. Along with the UNSC short sword comes three figures. There's one pilot and two jackals. These are rendered with a huge amount of detail and as I always say good detail is a very rare item in toys today. These figures have articulation which you will not find in a Lego minifigure. So to me their play appeal is excellent. I really feel that these figures are the highlight of this Mega Bloks set. Now let's have a look at the Jedi T6 shuttle. Yes it's a pretty good representation of a craft which has seamless smooth lines. Tricky to pull off when you're using Lego bricks. Lego has a huge arsenal of specialty bricks which can be seen used in this model. Lego also have a very impressive method of design. They tend to always be pushing the boundaries of what their bricks can do. The Lego design team are renowned for their attention to detail and having features incorporated in designs which echo what's seen in the craft they are recreating. It's pretty obvious that Lego are very comfortable with the devil called detail. Possibly my only gripes here is I feel the underside of the wing needs to be dressed considering it's a model which has a rotating wing which in a certain wing configuration renders the craft with a good looking side and a bad looking side. The other gripe is the Australian retail price. There wouldn't be an American citizen who would pay $99.99 for this model. Nevertheless it's got features and playability which keeps Lego as the market leaders with these styles of toys. So along come some Star Wars critters. The only ones I recognise is Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker. There's some lightsabers thrown in so these critters can have fights. And in classic Lego style there's loads of attention to detail afforded to each character. But as classic as these Lego minifigures are, its core design is a tad outdated. If that causes comment rage, well let it be. Do you think the Lego minifigures require more limb articulation? As seen in the Halo figures. Or maybe now once we see a Lego minifigure and a Halo figure standing side by side, we can start to have a little argument about which one is better than the other. And it's funny, we're dealing with one figure which is a well-established classic design, and some would even argue it's one of the best toys in the world. I'm neither a fanboy of either of these two franchises, I'm just a guy looking at two toys which I think are both very good. And in the end, the dark side can possibly rise up and win. The only thing I know about Star Wars is every time I watch it, I see someone's head getting chopped off. Now for the drop test. The Star Wars T6 shuttle is 496 grams, or that's 1 pound and 1.5 ounces. The Halo short sword is 620 grams, or that's 1 pound and 6 ounces. The first round of drop tests is a 2 meter, or that's 6.5 foot free fall.
Well, here's a bit of a crash investigation after that first drop, and it looks like the model's done pretty well. The core here, I can just see it's just on the verge of breaking off those, I don't know what they are, tell me Star Wars people. <laughs> One wing has kept attached to the core. One wing is broken off, and, oh, a little minifigure there, there's Obi-Wan, he's hiding under the engine bay, a bit of a headache. The cockpit had suffered a fair bit of damage in that drop. Some pieces have sprayed out over this direction, the cockpit canopy is there. And Anakin, Anakin's there, he's got a bit of a headache as well. Well here's a look at the first of the Halo UNSC short sword crashes and I can see there's obviously a wing there, the wings have separated apart, the fuselage is split into two, one the front forward piece there, the rear piece there. All in all it didn't do too badly but it didn't really hit in the spot that I wanted it to. There's the pilot and he looks like he's got a headache. Round two and again it's a two meter free fall. Okay, there's a second drop of the T6 shuttle and it is shattered, it has exploded on impact. There's the core, it looks like a major rebuild. The wings are intact, the cockpit has smashed completely and the pilots have ejected and landed underneath one of the high speed cameras. There was also a little bit of spray of material coming out in this direction. I think it's one of the parts that union the wings together. I'll move on to do the halo craft, I'm fighting to find a sunny spot for weeks now. Okay, just coming in and looking at the crash of the Halo short sword. And it looks like the fuselage has, well it's shattered, it's, um, it's almost completely fallen apart. The wings, which have heaps of overlapping bricks, uh, tend to be surviving. The end bits fall off, here's the other wing here. And the pilot, he was down there, he was actually trapped under the rubble of the fuselage. There was a few bricks that sprayed off in one direction and uh, landed in this corner. Looks like the cockpit has completely shattered on this crash. There's one thing about this model compared to the T6 shuttle is this is actually a fair bit heavier so to survive these crashes it's actually done pretty good. Mind you it has been rattled to the core. Well here are both craft after the second drop and let's have a bit of a closer look and see exactly what's going on. First the T6 shuttle there's the engines at the back there, the nacelles have sort of come drift a bit. There's the centre of the aircraft and there's a fair bit more damage there than the first drop. The wings have survived, even though there's not that much overlapping bricks. They've done pretty well, I'm quite surprised. They move forward and the cockpit has been completely wrenched apart. Although, you might say the front has survived. And there's the individual pieces which have broken away from that second drop. And now for short sword, let me look at the fuselage first, the rear section, like I showed you outside before. So close to losing all of that, it's not funny. Uh, mind you, this is a much heavier craft than the T6 shuttle. The wings are incredibly strong on this model. There's no delamination at all going on there from these drops, but I sort of knew that because there are so many overlapping bricks. The same with the other wing, we tend to lose a wing tip moving forward and you might say the front of the fuselage and the cockpit have exploded and there's the pilot there not looking very happy and there are the individual bricks broken away after the short sword second drop 
It's certainly a very tricky one to call. I would say it's even Stevens. I thought the T6 Shuttle won the first one. And I think they both broke apart pretty well in the second one. It's something beautiful about destruction. Round three, the high speed pendulum swing. I'm going to do another style of destruction to these models. And I'm going to swing them in on a pendulum. And I'll come in and I'll make impact with the bricks there. Really curious about how the wings on both models survive a good impact. a fairly substantial impact and I think the Lego bonding of the bricks is excellent that wing even though there's not many overlapping bricks there has held together pretty well on both sides the shock has been absorbed by the bits that have broken off probably most importantly we haven't got a separation from the core here yep it's pretty good and again from what we've seen in other drop tests that cockpit tends to explode I have to go back and look at the footage, I'm not sure what made impact of the bricks. Anakin's hiding under the wing here, he's been ejected rearwards. Looks like Obi-1 got shot forwards and has landed underneath the impact zone. Well, here is the UNSC short sword, ready to be swung into the bricks. It's going to be interesting to see how these wings hold up. Uh, they're highly layered in bricks, I've got a feeling that'll probably uh, break apart in the middle there and become three pieces but you never know until the model marries the bricks okay let's do it Well, that is going to get the LEGO fans chatting. This craft has survived that very heavy impact amazingly well. Look at that. There's barely any, any delamination going on there. You can see the, where the impact of the bricks on the front of the wing there is. The pilot didn't even eject. What a brave soul. Sort of lost a little bit of the wing tips. On either side, I heard a bit wing past my ear. I think I'm missing something from the front here. Although there's a little bit of dressing there. And there's a few little pieces behind the model. And if I collect all the pieces that I've found, that's all that's broken off after that fairly hefty impact. Well, for me, that was certainly an eye-opener. How do you feel about an impact? What's your thoughts on this Halo model after seeing that one? Well I've rebuilt the short sword after that swinging crash and I found that there's a part missing and it's the little blue guy that normally lives there. This is the area of the model which really took the full weight of the collision into those bricks. And only after reviewing the crash footage did I realise the piece had literally vaporised. So I went back outside and I hunted around for what was left and I found this. That's all that is left from the blue piece that used to be on the front of the aircraft, and it used to look like this. Seeing the way this model held together after that swinging crash is going to cause a lot of comment. So which company has the better build here? I felt Mega Bloks did a pretty good job up against LEGO Perfection. But as always, the audience will have the final say. This Mega Bloks Halo set is very good, but I know there's a whole bunch of people who won't touch it until it has this logo on the box. And sadly, I feel they're the ones missing out. Thank you for your time, and I'm very sorry for taking so long to produce this video. It was a really complex one to pull together. Again, thank you, and goodbye.